What is up you guys, I hope you all doing well. Welcome back to my channel, I'm Tony Fuentes. Today we're returning to the Edelike -like series and we're gonna try to replicate the film look of the Lomochrome Metropolis. Now in the past we've already tried to replicate a style from Lomography which was the Lomochrome 92, a very contrasty and dramatic punchy looking style. In this case the Lomochrome Metropolis is also very dramatic and very distinctive but it's a bit more nailed back, a bit more useful. So what we're gonna do is first of all just analyze the style with some examples and then we're going to jump into Lightroom and try to reconvert that film look into digital photography. So let's get to it. Okay creators, here I am in Lomography.com and you can see these example images all have been uploaded by users that bought the Lomochrome Metropolis and you can see in terms of the tint of the images you can see a lot of variation. Just like in digital photography, loads of factors come into play into the final result, and that's why we're seeing a lot of variation. It could be your lens that is rendering the colors in a specific manner. It could be your development process or your adjustments in post-edition. It could be that the film is a bit expired, so the results are gonna be completely different to a new film. Also, and the most important thing is gonna be the white balance, the light that was in the surroundings at the time. So if you're shooting in a cold day, your images are gonna be a lot cooler compared to images in a warm, sunny summer day. So that's why we can see this variation in the example images. Sometimes we have very cool images, very green, and then on the other hand, we have very warm and creamy like. Having said that, now let's jump into the details. Starting out with the exposure and contrast of this look. So right here we have this image in the Philippines or Thailand, I don't know, in a bright sunny day, and we can see how the highlights have loads of information, loads of detail, no overexposure in any part. But down here in the shadows, we also have a lot of information. Pay attention to the window, how we can see a lot of detail in the dark parts of the image. So this film stock has a wide dynamic range or wide latitude would be the equivalent in film. Uh, it's completely opposed or different to the Lomochrome 92 that we broke down a couple of weeks ago that had harsh contrast and we lost a lot of information in the shadows. Now, even though we have a lot of information in the shadows, we're still retaining a very nice contrast with punchy looking blacks, but also they're a bit raised. Notice how they're not completely black, they're a bit grayed out. So we're going to do this in basic corrections, but also in the tone group. Now, in terms of color, this film is very dramatic because it has heavy desaturation in all of the tones. You can see how the blues are very desaturated, the greens, the reds, all of the tones are desaturated in an equal manner. And that's why it's a very distinctive and dramatic style, but also is the reason why this uh, film stock isn't the best for portraits. You're better off going for a Kodak Gold or a Kodak Portra for portraits in particular, because right here, the skin tones are gonna be very muted and very flat. Now, one thing that's very evident for me with this film is that in the shadows or in darker scenarios, a lot of green starts to creep in in the dark parts of the image. We can see it right here in this train station and those greens are appearing through the sides where it's darker, but in the middle where we have highlights and bright parts of the image, we tend to get this creamy uh, look or this uh, warmish tint in the highlights and in the mid-tones. We can see it once again over here in this image, which is very green because it's in the shadows in a very cold day, but just pay attention to the bright parts of the image, how they're not completely white, they're more towards the yellows, a bit more of a creamy look. So this film behaves quite differently in sunny days and in overcast days, uh, the undertones that appear are quite different. So for example, in moody or overcast days or cold scenarios or dark scenarios, you're gonna find a lot of those greens creeping in in the shadows. We still have that creamy tone in the bright parts of the image or in the whites and in the clouds, but the greens are gonna be more relevant. Uh, opposite to that, when you're shooting in brighter or warmer scenarios, you're gonna find those greens basically muted and disappeared instead you can have those creamy tones or these warm tones appearing in the entirety of the image and taking a lot more relevance so creators i think i have all the information that i need now let's jump into lightroom and start editing now before that as always i have to remind you that these pieces that we're going to create today i'm going to add them to the air like pieces pack v3 link up here if you want to check it out in that preset pack, you're going to find all the pieces that we create throughout the year in the Edelac series. So a new video comes out of the Edelac series, a new preset gets added. Also, if you're only interested in the analog or film looks, you're going to find the analog preset pack that contains all the film look styles that we've created throughout the years. So link up here to my preset and LUT shop. If you can support me in any manner, I'd be very thankful. Those are the presets and LUTs that I use every single day to uh, ease my process when I'm color graying. So I just slap on a filter instead of going through every slider. So if you can support me in that manner, I'd be very thankful. If not, let's jump into Lightroom and start editing. Okay, great. Here in Lightroom, I have this little collection that I always use for my analog tutorials. And instead of using the same image of my friend Patricio over here walking in New York, we're gonna use, I'm gonna select this one from Venice. 
and with D on your keyboard, I'm going to move to the develop tab. Okay, so first of all, before we start, I'm just going to compensate a bit of the exposure, just bring it up. Yeah. Okay, before we jump into the color, first of all, exposure and contrast. We want to attain that specific contrast that the Lomo Metropolis has, but also we want to have more information in the dark parts of the image and fade out those blacks. Now, for that, we're going to use the basic corrections and in combination with the tone curve. Okay, so first of all, highlights. Now, the highlights, I'm not going to move them towards the positives, otherwise we attain more brightness and, in consequence, more contrast and we lose some detail in the bright parts of the image. Instead, what I'm going to do is go towards the negatives. Now, if we go towards the negatives, notice how more information starts to appear in the bright parts of the image that initially we didn't even see. So, of course, this is way too much. We don't want a completely flat image. We want to retain that natural contrast. So I'm just going to go a bit towards the negatives, around the minus 30, minus 29. Then the shadows, I'm going to do the opposite, not towards the negatives, otherwise we lose detail in the dark parts of the image. Instead, towards the positives, we have a lot more information and we can see a lot more detail in the darker parts of our image, just around the plus 40. Okay, next, whites and blacks. Now, these two are quite different from highlights and shadows. Meanwhile, highlights and shadows are in the middle of the exposure towards the midtones. The extremes are controlled by the whites in the brightest points and the blacks in the darkest points. So right here, by moving the whites towards the negatives, we're going to make sure that we don't have any clipping or any overexposed parts. I'm just going to go to the minus 15. And then the blacks, instead of going towards the positives, where we lose a lot of contrast and we have a flatter looking image, we want to uh, bring back a bit of the contrast that we took away with the shadow. So I'm just going to go towards the negatives. Around the minus 20, 25 is going to be just enough. So we have an image that now has a lot of information in the shadows, but also retaining those blacks to have that contrast. One thing that we're missing is those faded out blacks. So we're going to move down to the tone curve. Now the tone curve is a very powerful tool that allows us to control the exposure and contrast on our image, but also we can even use the RGB channels that we have over here to change some of the colors and create a specific color grading look. For this tutorial, we're just going to concentrate in the point tone curve that is over here. If, one, if you want an in-depth tutorial about the tone curve, I already made it, link up here. Uh, I basically made an in-depth tutorial about every single tool that we're going to cover today, so they're going to start to appear, uh, the respective videos up here like a banner. Okay, so I'm going to create a point in the shadows and also a point in the midtones over here. Now, what I'm interested in doing for this tutorial is affecting the shadows, just adding a bit more punch into the contrast, but also, in particular, raising the blacks. We want them grayed out, a bit more faded. For this tutorial, we're not going to touch the highlights over here. So that's why I'm creating this point in the midtones that will act as an anchor so we don't affect the brightest parts on our image and the upper tone curve. So this point over here, I'm just going to place it just right here. The value is going to be 98 and 101 in the output. If you're not too sure what these are, this is basically the X axis coordinates, 98 over here, 101 going up. Next, the shadows, just going to drag it down ever so slightly below the diagonals. We have a bit more punch, not too much. Otherwise, it's just quite uh, too contrasty. Just going to drag it a bit down. The value is going to be 40 and 36. And then finally, the blacks, as we can see, they're pure blacks. What I'm going to do is just raise this point up and notice how immediately they turn towards the grayish tones and they're completely washed out and faded out. Now, this is way too high. Maybe plus 17 is just going to be enough. Not too high, not too low. So this is the tone curve and before this is how it looked. And now it's just a bit more punchy with those blacks faded out. Okay, before we jump into the color, there's one thing missing that we have to alter in the exposure and contrast, it, and that's the presence tab. Now, in the presence tab, two of the sliders affect the contrast, which is clarity that affects contrast in the midtones and the haze that will add more contrast or reduce a bit more contrast. So right here, the haze, I don't want to go towards the positives, otherwise we end up with an image that looks too contrasty, very uh, synthetic. This isn't what we want. We want to go towards the negatives. And if we go towards the negatives, a side effect of this tool is that we achieve a similar effect to halation. We create these halos in the bright parts of the image. And right here, we don't have any lights, but as you can see, the bright parts of the image start to glow and some haze starts to appear around them. Now, I like to use this in a creative manner. So that's why I'm going towards the negatives with a value not too low around the minus 18, just affecting a bit of the contrast because it also creates a bit more of a gloomy effect on our image, a bit more hazy. So we're losing a bit of the contrast by going towards the negatives. 
Then clarity, as you can see, go towards the positives. We add more contrast into details in the midtones. So I'm going to go towards the negatives, just reducing a bit of that overly contrasty image that we shot in digital cameras, turn on the minus 13. And then texture is another value not related to contrast that I'm going to change because, well, this image is tad sharp. It was shot in 70 mil, one over 8,000 of a second and F 3.2. So it's a very sharp image. Uh, product of modern photography so right here what i'm going to do is just reduce a bit of the sharpness just dragging it to the negatives to make an image a bit less sharp around the minus 20 is just going to be enough and there we have an image a bit more organic representing the old cameras that we used to shoot photos with so that's it for exposure and contrast now we have a punchier looking image with a lot more information in the shadows and those fade out blacks next up we need to change the colors now the colors is the fun part first of all we want a very desaturated style. So instead of going into the color mixer into HSL and desaturating each of the colors, we're gonna use the global saturation slider over here. And here we're gonna go a bit ham towards the negatives, around the minus 35. And immediately you can see how the image, well, it, we're basically desaturating it heavily and taking a lot of life out of the color. So this is what we were looking for, an image which is a lot more flat and a very specific style that the Lomochrome Metropolis has. Okay, next up we want to achieve the color palette of lomography now lomography in the styles that are not too radical like turquoise for example in the 92 or in the metropolis they have a very specific tone shift in the greens in particular towards the emeralds or the cool tones and in the reds towards the magentas so this tone shift i like to use camera calibration to do it because it alters all the colors on our image towards that specific palette camera calibration by default in lightroom classic is at the bottom you can also find it in the lightroom desktop but you cannot find it in the lightroom mobile to this day so camera calibration what it does is alter the rgb the red the green and the blue these three primary colors compose every single pixel that we're going to see on our images so it's a very complex tool. I know I already made a tutorial or several tutorials about it. Link up here to one of them, trying to explain it. Um, the best way to know how it works is just to experiment and practice. Okay, so first of all, the green primary, right? Over here, we have a bit of green, not too much green in this image. We have this um, canvas, I don't know how it's called, and these green bushes. So we want to change them, not towards the yellowish tones over here, towards the cooler tones as you can see they tend up to more towards the emerald colors or the turquoise colors now this is way too much just going to drag it a bit towards the positives just around the plus 10 and just going to reduce a bit of the vibrance while pulling down the saturation around the minus five then the red primary we do have a lot of red over here in the oranges in the boats and also in the buildings in the background if we go towards the positives we can change them towards more of a yellowish greenish color which isn't what we want lomography normally change it towards the purples not too much like this this is way too extreme this everything is pink just around the minus 25 minus 24 is just gonna be enough just to attain these more of a magenta looking reds okay next up the grain the grain was a very important aspect in the analysis because well lomochrome metropolis has a lot of grain and it's very distracting now we're going to just add some amount you can find it in the effects tab but the size we don't want to go too high otherwise um, basically the noise is way too big and this is what we saw we saw a very small noise maybe around the 20 but then we saw it in large quantities so i'm just going to go ham maybe around the plus 80s 85 for the amount so we have a lot of noise over here it's more like noise rather than grain and you can see it when you're not zoomed in. You can obviously play around with the roughness to make it a bit less noticeable or a bit more contrasty. That will depend on you guys. I'm just gonna leave it at 50 by default. And then we have our grain. Okay, the next step is the final step, but it's the most important one. We're missing the green undertones in the shadow and also the warm tones in the highlights. And for that, we're gonna use color grain. Now, color grain over here is a tool that allows us to add a tint into the shadows to the midtones or to the highlights. As you can see, this tool depends on the exposure on our image. If most of your image is considered a shadow, it will be painted more with the color that you add in the shadows. If it's a brighter image, more with the tone that you add in the highlights. So, have, so you have to keep that in mind always when editing with color grain. So first of all, the shadows. I'm just gonna add that green tone. I'm gonna add some saturation and you guys can play around with the green that you want. Maybe you want a green more towards the yellows like this one. Maybe you want more of an aqua looking green in this case i'm just going to go with more towards the center with a value of 36 in the hue and the saturation i recommend the value between 5 and 10 i'm just going to go with 5 just a bit a bit more conservative now we have that 
nice green tint added into the shadows very subtle maybe it's not even noticeable on youtube but it's there and then in the highlights we want to add that yellowish cast so I'm going to go to the highlight wheel over here add a color it's going to be 58 on the hue and obviously uh, the saturation is just going to drag it around the eight percent and then you can see how the bright parts on our image like the clouds or this building over here have that creamy looking yellow so we can disappear color grain over here this is before and after just the slightest of changes but it's there now right here we can create two presets we can create a variant for warmer days with a lot more yellow and then a variant for colder days with a lot more blue so for that i'm going to use the global color wheel over here and this one we can basically add a yellow or add a blue depending on what we want so right here first of all let's create the blue one i'm just going to add some saturation just going to find the color over here i'm going to go with this blue and the saturation is going to be around the 15 percent and as a result now we have this cold looking image with those warmer tones in the highlights and those greens in the shadows we can deactivate color grain right here to see what it's done this is before and after we have a colder looking image so i'm going to save this preset and then we're going to create the variant so to save a preset we're going to go to the left panel over here under presets hit the plus sign create preset we're going to name it and remember we don't want to mark any value that we didn't use so for example we didn't use color mixer we're going to unmark it we didn't use white balance exposure and contrast nor detail lens corrections or transform now to create the warmer variant for sunny days we just have to add a warmer tone into the global color wheel in this case i'm going to add the same value that we added in the highlights just going to be 58 in the hue and the saturation i'm going to leave it at 15 and immediately you can notice how the image is a lot more warm and it has this overall sepia like looking tone so i'm going to save it once again so let's see how the two presets perform in this image of these old guys in seville and as you can see our image is very desaturated tending towards the warmer tones but also we have a lot of green added into the image even though we only added a five percent of saturation why because lightroom is detecting that most of this image is in the darker range so if i pull up the exposure ever so slightly notice how the green starts to fade out and we're introducing a lot more yellow into the image so we have always have to keep in mind that color grading works with the exposure on our image and it's going to be largely affected by the overall exposure of your shot so it's if it's underexposed like over here you can notice how the green appears if it's overexposed you can notice how the green disappears and the yellow starts to appear that we added in the highlight color wheel now let's see the cold version and the cold version only adds that blue tint into the image very dramatic with the contrast with the saturation uh, very reduced but it's looking quite nice let's see them in this image over here first of all let's apply the warmer version and it looks fantastic we have a very nice looking image with a lot more information in the shadows notice how we have more detail in the dark parts of the image we have that very distracting film grain and overall that warm cast let's see how the cold version looks in here it just shifts the vibe of this filter towards a cooler looking image how about in this image i'm just going to correct a bit of the tilt i don't know about you guys but when i'm out shooting all day by the end of the day my hand is getting tired and as a result all my photos are a bit tilted towards the left um, so let's apply the presets this is the metropolis the warm version it looks quite nice we have that very nice contrast very punchy looking blacks and um, faded out but also we have a lot more detail in the shadows compared to the original notice how the gray in the original image is a bit more harsh and right here we have more information in the shadows but it's looking quite nice with that desaturation and then the cold tone it just adds a cool vibe into the image and we have that very nice film grain how about over here this image is just after dusk so uh, let's up the exposure let's apply metropolis warm over here and it's looking quite nice we have a very nice contrast very natural looking contrast a bit more information in the shadows and those faded out blacks now the cold version is more adept for this image it just looks fantastic now the contrast i think we have it spot on sometimes it's quite difficult to get the film look contrast because in the shadows it's very tricky in the darkest points of the shadows it's very punchy but then just a little bit higher up in the exposure the shadows are a bit bright and have a lot more detail and information so right here i think we did a perfect job in attaining the contrast of the lomochrome metropolis so there you have it guys my interpretation of the lomochrome metropolis i hope you achieved some knowledge out of this video and remember that these two presets are in the edit like plus pack v3 and also the edit like lut pack v3 so i've reconverted these presets into filters for video in case you want to apply them into your filmmaking as well link up here to both of them 
that's it for today. Like the video, subscribe, all those things. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.